And the first question is, does the plies exercise limit hydration or fashion? I think the first thing is explaining what are we talking about with hydration of fascia? I think that there's, we sort of need to define that first. It's not just drinking water. Um, what is hydration of fascia so that everybody's on the same page? Well, fascia is a whole body system. It's a, it's a web of tissue. I'm answering the question, what is fascia? But I needed to do that to say, and, and then to secondly say, there is no free water in the system except for urine. All water is bound water. Like when you have a grape, you know, the grape, if you, if you slice open the skin of the grape, the water doesn't pour out. It's, it's held, it's bound. Because when water enters our system, it enters as, as crystallized, it becomes H3O2, and it binds to the crystalline structure, especially of the um, collagen. But when it goes into our uh, um, alimentary canal, into our stomach, it gets absorbed into the circulatory system and somewhat into the lymphatics. In the circulatory system, the only way you can get this, the, the, the fluid out of the circulatory system, by, because by then it's not water, it's, it's, a, it's fluid, is through two different ways. It's through movement itself, pulls it out of the capillaries into the fascia, into the extracellular matrix, and then through pressure and elongation of manual therapy, or um, when we're just sitting on something, and we move that pressure on the on the extra on the external skin the, uh, that the fascia embeds in will pull that fluid out into um, into the extracellular matrix. So um, it does flow freely um, into the area of a joint with torn tissue. When the tissue is torn in a strain or a sprain or a shear or a tear then the water or, the, or the, the fluid becomes unbound and floods into an area. And that's what we call swelling. Got it. So in this question then, the question is, for example, mat work exercises traditionally don't tend to blend movement seamlessly, which I'm going to question in a second. Like is often demonstrated in fascial movement classes. How can we as Pilates instructors promote more hydration to enhance side, to enhance slide and glides of the fascial network without losing the original principles of the Pilates method. So I can answer the Pilates method, but if you could talk about the movement again and your impression of Pilates, I mean, you and I have worked together for 20 plus years. So we've been working this gig of myofascial release and movement uh, fascia for a long time. What's your impression of that, of that question? Uh, there's no aspect of Pilates, as I understand it, that inhibits or interferes with um, hydration and fluidity. All of the movement that's taught, at least by Polestar, is supporting hydration. Um, I think she might have in mind, or he might have in mind, the, the, the free-flowing movement assisted by the springs definitely does help with the slide. It's not really sliding, it's gliding. There's no sliding because there's no friction. So hyaluronin keeps it all um, just fluid, but there's no aspect of Pilates that interferes with hydration and no aspect of exercise that interferes with hydration. Yeah, and my point would be just that, you know, we can create the fluidity of movement, you know, with simple transition and beautiful cueing, even in the most traditional of Pilates mat classes. So right. I would say that the movement itself, I would not um, think that the fascia would be particular to a, a form of movement. Uh, the question is, is does the movement incorporate the entire body and all planes of movement to give the fascia proper information, which we feel strongly that Pilates does, yoga does, those things.